Okay, I'm gonna do this as quick as possible because I feel like this is gonna take me ages. First card is the full one. This is the first card in the deck and this is part of the Major Arcana, which is the first group that I'm doing, which basically means that like it holds the most power and the, the most, yeah, the most energy in the deck. So the fool embodies innocence, freedom, adventure, travel, also a bit of foolishness. Obviously that's a bit obvious, um, but basically has a naive outlook on the world. So it's like a complete blank slate and you have no preconceived ideas of how the world is. You just like completely trust everyone. Spontaneous, lack of commitment. It, yeah, it's like the youth, youthful card. And also symbolism is like yellow. I always see as happiness. And that's pretty a pretty universal thing to know on the sun. If the sun and yellow is in the card, it usually means happiness. Next then is the magician. So I always see this as like someone who is a person of power, has a bit of influence, also is really good at manifesting and might have some sort of psychic powers or uh, higher power or yeah, psychic abilities and intelligent. Again, yellow happy good at cultivating everything you want. The High Priestess is someone who's very intelligent, a person of influence, also a bit of mystery, sen uh, sensuality, someone who's very into spirituality, has a higher power, very creative, and is a card of fertility as well. And a lot of balance here because it's a black and white thing. I don't know why it says BJ, except for hardly for blowjob, I don't know what that is. This is like the sexy legend card, I love getting this, the Empress basically, it also is a pregnancy card, could be fertility card, motherhood, but also is about like creativity, beauty, femininity, nature, harmony, art, and is the ruler of love, because it has a Venus sign here. And then this is the masculine of the Empress card, so I suppose same thing, it's like older, stay, it, obviously it doesn't necessarily mean that it is about a man, but more like um, embodies um, or has masculine features. So this one is an older, man, a uh, stable, dependable, a father figure, someone who values structure and is a pr protective, uh, could be a person of authority and someone very logical or practical. Next is, this is kind of the masculine version of the high priestess, I feel like, but I always see this as like the conservative card or someone who um, likes rigid, stru regimented structures or routines. So it would be the complete opposite of me, like someone who wants to do a degree, masters and a PhD sort of buzz and someone who wants to like actually have a stable career. So yeah, that's the Buzz. It's not. I don't. It's not a uh, obviously negative thing. But sometimes when I say conservatism, sometimes people are like, ah. Oh. But that's all I mean. It's just like actually just a stable person. Lover is pretty self-explanatory. Soulmate card. Kindred spirits. Romance, desire, sexual connection, shared values. Yeah. The chariot. I see this as like taking action for your future. You could be traveling. It could be asking out someone on a date. Could be applying for a job. It also is uh, lots of ambition, determination, willpower, self-discipline, hard work, and focus. But I always see this as like taking charge of your life, basically. Next then is strength. This is pretty self-explanatory as well. Courage, bravery, confidence, compassion. Um. Also taming your self-doubt or yeah and owning your confidence, it would be taming the animal. So red is passion, yellow is happiness, uh, infinite possibilities for the infinity sign. I love the hermit, it's basically someone who needs to, t who's on a journey of like uh, introspection, self-discovery, self-revelations, needing to spend a lot of time on your own to have some sort of uh, new creative ideas or outlook on the world. Yeah, it basically just means a moment of solitude to like figure out who you are as a person. Wheel of Fortune obviously is a good, good luck uh, card, destiny change, whatever's coming is your fate, the cycle of life, it could also mean that anything you think of, you can manifest into your life and it stands for karmic cycles too. So if you're mean to people, like bad things will happen to you. But if you put out good into the world, then you also get good in return. Then justice. This is obviously stuff to do with conflict. Just uh, conflict. Justice will be served, but also could be a warning to be honest with yourself. Learn from your mistakes. It also could stand for like legal disputes. Someone who wants to study law you know, it would come up in those things. And obviously because it has a balance sign, make sure that you're looking at both sides of the uh, confrontation with an unbiased opinion so that you can reach an actual good, uh, fair resolution. The Hanging Man, this is uh, feeling trapped or having a lack of direction in life, probably a bit stagnant and needing to go to spirituality for an answer. So that's what I would see this thing as. Now that that's obviously up for interpretation, but that's how I would see it. It's like, ask your dreams, meditate, whatever. This isn't, not, isn't a scary card. I don't know why people think it is so scary. This is like the death of something in your life to bring in something new. It actually should be called the birth card. Uh, but anyway, the Grim Reaper is coming to like take something out of your life that's no longer serving you. And from that, now don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to have a positive spin on all the cards. Like there definitely is negative, definitely negative uh, tarot cards. They're not all positive. But this one, I always, don't, I don't really see that negative. But yeah, to me, this just looks like total rejuvenation, birth, yeah, like a rebirth of yourself. Sorry, they keep focusing on these fellas, sorry. I think it's because the faces are in the Okay, so 
This is the card of patience, harmony, balance, peace, tranquility. Uh, it could also be calm, having a good perspective and make sure you're filling your cup as well as others. It's like complete balance and harmony in your life. Yeah, this is a really nice card to get. One with nature. Now, this is a bad card. I've gotten this in a love reading before. This usually means like toxic ties. It could be abusive relationships. It could be someone using you for sex. It could also be a drug addiction, psychological issues or mental health issues. Well, that's the same thing basically. But if it comes up in a love reading, it usually means something toxic going on. Either someone is doing, like using you for some reason. It could be that someone is way more superficial than you think. It could be you as well who's doing that where you're going for a person for the wrong reasons. Tower card, bad card. This means total upheaval of your life. You could be losing a job, you, someone could be dying, your house could literally go on fire. This means something really, really bad is going to happen or has happened already. The star, I kind of see as a self-love card, making sure that you're looking after yourself and indulging in like self-care sort of buzz. Also to do with like contentment, having lots of inspiration and you know, taking time for like your spirituality, your healing so that you can creatively flourish and progress. The moon is like, stuff to do with the moon is usually lying, deceit, or like looking for an answer. That's why I think the dogs like shouting at the moon is like looking for an answer of some kind. So I think the moon is, stands for kind of like going on a new path, having a lot of anxiety or fear about the future and like looking for an answer. But yeah, like needing to go down the yellow brick road sort of was to find your path yourself. I suppose it is asking the moon for the answers. And then the sun is the happiest card in the deck. So this basically means total positivity, freedom, fun, success, optimism, vitality, joy, confidence, self-expression, good luck, enthusiasm, happiness, truth, openness, and also could be a pregnancy card. So, cause a little baby there. Next is judgment. I would usually interpret this as making, make sure to speak your truth truth, uh, stick up for people, also listen to your intuition when trusting people. Also looking at yourself, having a self-evaluation, finding if you have any flaws and make sure that you're not being too judgmental. Make sure that you get, forgive people for their flaws and also forgive yourself for your past. Next then is the world. This is usually achievement. It's kind of like a medal card sort of buzz or a trophy. So accomplishing stuff, achieving, completion, fulfillment, sense of belonging, wholeness, and also could be a travel card. Next then, and uh, next group we're doing is the cups. So I would always see this as emotion. If you think of water, water, tears, what do cups hold water? So yeah. Oh, I did this arse ways right now. So first up, the two... No, what? So first up, Ace of Cups is a completely new beginning. It's also, I usually see it as like new relationships, new romance, everlasting emotion coming from it. The Dove is usually like harmony, peace. This is a really positive card. If you want like a, yeah, basic new beginning of your life, it also could be a fertility or pregnancy card. Also a lot of celebrating and socializing. Next two of Cups is a soulmate card. Partnership, love, compatibility, happy couple, soulmates, relationships, harmony, balance, could be marriage, mutual uh, attraction, and respect. Three cups is the party card, so I would usually see this as like gathering, reunion, uh, engagement party, like just partying in general. Four of cups is refusing offers from people. So if people are asking you on dates, your friends are asking you out, but you're completely isolating yourself and not looking at the good parts of your life. So people are handing your things, but you're focusing on the bad or you're, uh, you're wallowing in self-pity basically. Sorry, my thing is not, won't go in focus. <laughs> Fuck off. Next then is the Five of Cups. This is like real sadness, loss, grief, despair, abandonment. This would usually come up after a breakup, having a lot of repressed anger or guilt. It could be dealing with trauma, having emotional instability, focusing on your loss, isolation, feeling loneliness. But as you can see here, there's like cups spilled over that they're focusing on, but you still have good things in your life as well that you could be looking at. Next then, the Six of Cups is nostalgia, childhood memories. Also, in if it's upside down or like negative, it could be childhood issues or abuse or childhood trauma, innocence, creativity, past influences, feeling homesick, reunions, because all of this, when the stuff is in flowers, I always interpret that as like, that's only temporary, that will die, it's not full of water. So water is like everlasting and you can keep refilling your cup. But with flowers, they kind of die and you have to replant them. That's why it's like important not to wallow in your nostalgia or childhood. Anyway, it's happy looking back on, but it's te only temporary. Then I always see this one, the seven of cups. People always interpret this as positive, but I kind of see it as a negative one. I always see it as the um, maladaptive daydreaming card because it's like the person has their head stuck in the clouds and is like daydreaming of all these things that are kind of superficial. Yeah, you're focusing more on like materialism, but you are a very powerful manifester and you can bring all those things into your life if 
if you want to, but you have to like get your head out of the clouds. This one, the Eight of Cups, is having to leave a toxic situation or to go on a journey to figure out who you are and figure out the truth. Again, the moon is kind of the thing of um, lies and the person is like walking away from it. So yeah, it's basically letting go, uh, walking away, searching for some sort of escapism and seeking the truth. You might feel a bit lonely from it, but you'll gain some emotional strength and courage afterwards. And then the nine, oh, that was weird. Nine, the nine of cups is all your wishes coming true, feeling happy, joy, fulfilled, positive, ab abundant, achievements, confidence, celebrating, entertaining, fame. It could be acclaim, pleasure. That's just fantastic. Good card to get. And then I love this card as well. This, I usually uh, would interpret this as like putting your relationships above all else. It's like the complete opposite of Seven of Cups where you value relationships over su superficial things um, and anything materialistic. Uh, also could be happiest in nature, by the sea, total emotional abundance. It also could be the family card. If you're feeling homesick, if the person's away, it's like you have to read it intuitively, obviously. And it could be the marriage card as well if it comes up in a love reading. Page of Cups is trying to get in tune with your inner child. It also could be happy news coming in or someone coming in with an offering. It's to do with artistic beauty. It could be a crush or admirer coming in. Yeah, and stands for a dreamer, spirituality. Blue to me is always like spirituality and like kind of psychic abilities. I'm not sure, actually bullshitting, to be honest. Next then is the Knight of Cups. So this is, again, is uh, another romantic proposal. Someone coming in asking you on a date, sweeping you off your feet. It also could be a gentleman. It doesn't necessarily have to be a man. They could be really creative, sensible, psychic, charming person. Next then, Queen of Cups. I always see this as the psychics or natural healers. It could be an empath. Uh, someone who's really creative, romantic, loyal, sensitive, kind. Good mother card as well. A bit shy, feminine, loving. Yeah, girl boss but like a psychic, shy girl boss. Next then is the King of Cups, someone who is compassionate, calm, caring, friendly, sympathetic, wise, tolerant, diplomatic, affectionate, devoted, uh, could be a married man and could be good husband or father or a spiritual guide. Next group then is the pentacles. So the pentacles is to do with money and like career and that sort of thing. Obviously pentacles are pretty self-explanatory. So the first one then, ace of pentacles. This is again like the ace of cups, a complete new beginning. So it could be a new job, financial new beginning or an offering, uh, loads of prosperity, money, security and stability and abundance, whatever you've been manifesting because they're obviously holding the thing in their hand and it's coming out of the clouds. That usually means that you manifested it, whatever it is. Or if you haven't started manifesting things, start doing it. Next then is the Two of Pentacles. I usually see this as f having a hard time uh, balancing your finances. So you might not be, be putting enough in savings or like looking at the things you're spending your money on to keep an eye on that. And it could be financial stress as well because there's like rocky waters in the background. This one is working in a team or working together to achieve something. Also, if it comes up in a reading where the person is like stressed or whatever, it could be go to other people for help or start learning, ask for an apprentice or an internship, starting to get recognition, hard work paying off. Yeah, just basically basically like setting goals for yourself, collaborating and working, having a lot of ded dedication, like growing at something with the help of other people. So that's why it's like asking for an internship and an apprenticeship is like getting to the next stage through someone else. So you can't do it on your own. You need to ask other people for help. Next then is kind of like being stingy with money, but this doesn't have to be a bad card depending on the position of it, but it could be that some people are saving a lot or they also could be hoarding. Uh, it could be greed and materialism too. Yeah, it's, depending on the position of the card, it could be good or bad, but usually it's like someone being stingy or being obsessed with money. Then this one is negative card, uh, financial loss, hardship, uh, negative change, could be losing your job, leaving you out in the cold, abandonment. If it comes up in a love reading as well, it's someone who has broken up with you or yeah, someone who has broken up with you but is like asking for you back but you don't want any of them. Obviously negative, just negative. This one is generosity card. Uh, so this is like supporting your community. It could be employment. It could be sharing kindness, wealth, prosperity, power, authority, gratitude, being valued, rewards, fairness and equality. Yup, the Libras is all I'll say. Legends only. Next then is the Seven of Pentacles. So this would be you've been working really, really hard at something and everything you want is coming to fruition but you kind of feel like, oh, I've been putting all this work in but I don't know if it's paying off yet. Look at him, he's like, oh, I don't know if it's even working to be honest, but it is on its way to you. It's nearly, nearly there, so to keep going. 
and uh, keep manifesting and keep growing and keep working. Yeah, pers just uh, persistence. And then this one, I usually see as uh, someone who's self-employed because that's it, like the opposite of the three pentacles, the person's on their own and like really, really working hard. Could be a tradesperson, someone who is into creative things and like making things with their hands. So it could be a designer, artist, something like that. But it also could be the leader of your own business too. So if you're into more um, non-creative things. Um, it could also be the card of ambition, working towards something that you want. So like building qualifications as well, like all of these things, achieving things, ambition, good. That's a good one. This one, total girl boss card. This is the independent woman card. If you get this in a general reading, I would say, this is like the self-love card and looking after yourself and not looking after you know putting yourself before anyone else it also can be like a businesswoman uh starting your own business that's based off of something that is contributing to the world that is uh has a good contribution what starting a business that has a good contribution to the world it's basically just like independent success prosperity wealth thriving business having the freedom to do what you want not having to like work that hard self-reliance it can also be another card of pregnancy then Ten of Pentacles is like unexpected financial windfall or limps, a lump sum. Uh, you could be inheriting something from some, wait what? You could be inheriting from a family member. It could be old money or it could be money from like a business empire that you've built. Uh, it, it basically means long-term financial security. If this was coming up in a reading for you over and over and over again, I'd start, I wouldn't be into gambling now, but like maybe start, maybe buy a lotto ticket the odd time. But uh, yeah, be careful with that or you, then you'll start getting the devil card. Oh, it also could be marrying into money if you're into that sort of thing. Page of Pentacles. So this is good news coming in. Again, could be, it's like a solid new beginning, fresh start. It could be an entry level job, but it's basically laying foundations for your future and it has excellent prospects. Next then, Knight of Pentacles is have patience. The thing, not like the, not, kind of different to the other knights, is going a bit slower. To have a bit of persistence and keep working for what you want because you're making your dreams and your wishes come true this one also could be working with nature something like that and then the red is like keep up your passion and your intensity and your ambition keep going next then queen of pentacles oh yeah this is the witch card i always see it as uh someone who is a witch uh someone de who's down to earth a social butterfly generous successful wealthy loves luxury is a great housemaker looking after people very organized practical and is a natural born healer or a witch Next then, obviously this is pretty self-explanatory as well. King of Pentacles, someone who is very, very rich, could be a big businessman um, or someone who embodies masculine features. But see the difference between the queen and the king, she is kind of like nurturing, there's some, na there's animals in the thing. So she's not materialistic, but the King of Pentacles would be very materialistic and a big conservative, but is really, really successful in terms of their career and money making. So they could be hoarding wealth, accumulating, accumul a lot of wealth this is like the Elon Musk card and this one is like Grimes she might pretend that she's a communist but she's not actually she loves a bit of money but she's a bit more caring and has a bit more empathy than Elon and he's just like hoarding wealth you know next then wait a minute now so next is the swords this to me is always like conflict or fighting because it's a scary it's, it's a, a scary and then the ace of swords again the ace card is always like fresh new beginning but this is like a double-edged sword so there could be negative um negatives to this where you have to like cut people out of your life and really go for what you want you might have to step on a few people's toes but you're definitely making the right decision you, you have to use your assertiveness a bit more it could be realizing the truth communicating your vision because you have the complete your complete ability to achieve whatever you want and yeah it could be a new idea plan projects Complete new beginning. Next then, two of swords. This is like, you were lying to yourself about something. You're not addressing your emotions. You're in between two decisions. Obviously there's some lying the moon there. You're sitting on the fence. You're at a crossroad. You have a divided loyalty, caught in the middle, denial blindness basically this is like if you're in a relationship with someone and they're cheating on you and you know it but you're just like no i actually can't see it all of a sudden i'm blind i actually don't even know what a phone is even though they're like texting other people this is like you need to address what's happening because there's so much emotion that you're suppressing and it will just get really bad and you'll get drowned you will fall in if you don't address it now uh self-explanatory this is the betrayal heartbreak usually the cheating card home wrecking card um, okay and then the four of swords anxiety stress having to take a break from whatever conflict is going on in your life if it's like you're fighting with your family you're fighting with your friends you need to 
put it to rest because it is really, really affecting you. You need to take a moment of recuperation, meditate, protect yourself, maybe even go to therapy or counseling. But anyway, whatever it is, it's like you're very overwhelmed, you need some solitude. Next then, five of swords. Again, walk away from conflict, whatever fight you're having. Although do fight back and stand up for yourself, but then walk away afterwards, don't keep it going. It also can be the bullying card or like violence, a lot of aggression. There's loads of other things, murder, yeah, like really, yeah, it could be really intense, but you, yeah, this was like a bad, bad card. Either you're bullying people and you need to address it or other people are being horrible to you and you need to stick up for yourself and walk away. It could be either. Now, I hate telling people if they're a bully or not, but usually the other cards would tell me and I probably just wouldn't say it because like, why would you say that to someone if you don't know them? I would just be like, oh, maybe you just have, a, you need a bit of self-evaluation. That's a nice way of saying it. Next one then, Six of Swords is you're healing and you're moving forward. So the closer you get to 10, like the easier and better it gets with these cards. So there is calm waters ahead from whenever you're going away from. You might need to travel to get away from it, but to make sure that you're not bringing your baggage along with you. <laughs> like it, his family is his baggage. No, but you know what I mean? But no, well the swords are not really, no, but the swords would be the baggage. So like to make sure that you're actually addressing your emotions and your issues before moving away from it or trying to run away and that you need a bit of guidance. So to make sure that you're not running away, but you are like, escaping whatever issues are holding you back. Oh, next then. Seven, this is usually to do with, this obviously is a robber, so it's someone who's using trickery, deceit, lies, either mental manipulation, has sharp wit, is scheming and very adaptable. So this is, to me would look like someone who's like a social climber, or someone who's like using you because your family has a pool, so they're pretending to be friends with you so they can go swimming in your pool. Or like someone using you for sex if you're, you're um, not, you're in a situation ship sort of buzz. This one is really negative card, feeling trapped, restricted, paralyzed by fear, terror, anxiety, could be hopeless, helplessness, also psychological issues, all can, also can be uh, stuff to do with eating disorders as well. Feeling powerless, help, helpless, really needs to get some help. Seek professional help. Next one then, this is usually, uh, pretty self-explanatory this is like dealing with trauma and having a having trouble sleeping because of it it doesn't have to be that overt is that the word yeah it doesn't have to be about sleeping because the thing is in the bed is pretty obvious but to make you remember it's like oh i'm so overwhelmed by all this trauma that i cannot i can't even sleep it also could be like dealing with regret remorse feeling isolated dealing with migraines uh despair having nightmares as well from the trauma and then next one, obviously, again, self-explanatory, but this one is like, all the 10 swords have been used up, so this is the worst, <laughs> this is the worst it's gonna get. You've hit rock bottom, backstabbed, betrayed, walked all over, used as a doormat. It now is time to get over it. Put nail in the coffin and over, get over it. Stand up and yeah, because it's all, the only way is up from here. Next then, page of swords, God bless them. Again, this is new, anytime I think of the page, it's like news coming in, someone asking you on a date, someone offering you a job, someone offering something, but it's like, it's not as new as the ace card. The ace card is like, this will completely change your life, but this is like an offering Whereas you don't actually have to change anything of your life, but something new is coming in. This could be like to do with education. It could be someone making a truce with you or like an old friend coming back. It could be an ex texting you again to be like, sorry about what I did to you. Uh, it also is like, think before you act on it because the page, the page, page cards can be a bit immature and impulsive. So to think before you do it, have a bit of patience and yeah, think, think it through basically. Knight of Swords. So this is big changes and opportunities coming in very, very fast. Look how fast he's going, Jesus, slow down. So it's it's basically be more assertive, adre uh, direct. Maybe do take the take the plunge, but also if you're being a bit impatient, be careful not to be a bit impulsive. But like have your wits about you. This is like someone who's a hero, very brave, focused, and will reap the rewards of it. So take action of your life. Make sure that you don't get stepped on anymore. Next, then Queen of Swords. So this is someone who is very protective. Obviously, the sword. Any time someone's holding a sword, is it, I see it, perceive it as like protection. Someone who's independent strong, intelligent, open-minded. It you can be a single mother card because it's like the protective nature and also a bit of repressed pain. Yeah, she's holding back on something. She's gone through a lot. This queen's gone through a lot, but she will protect you at all costs. Next then, King of Swords, someone who is rational, intelligent, logical, a person of authority, uh, holds a lot of strength, is a bit detached though, has a lot of integrity, very stern, self-disciplined, head over heart, could be a father, 
father could be like someone who's a judge or something but usually this is like well I feel like most dads are like this emotionally unavailable dad but it's like a good one all the same same as this card actually they're both very kind of unemo emotionally unavailable think of them as parents they're like emotionally unavailable but they're very protective and would, would take on the world for you but they can't really be there for you emotionally. They're not that good with the emotional support. But you know, people can't be perfect. Now wands, so, so wands would be like creativity, desire, yeah, like wishes. That's, yeah, that's a good explanation. So first up, again, new beginning. This also is a great news, uh, a new creative spark, finding a new passion, having a lot of enthusiasm, accepting challenge, a lot of fun, talent, growth. It could be travel, excitement and a total rebirth. So again, wands are about like creativity and desire. So finding a new passion that changes your life. Finding out like you're good at singing or something. Next then, this would be you could be between two paths, but the world's your oyster. Whatever you do will be a, a positive one. It also could be do, to do with emigrating, traveling overseas, moving abroad. Well, that's all the same thing. Having a bit of wanderlust and feeling a bit uh, restless. But to make sure that you plan ahead properly before you do it. Next then, this is also another travel card. Moving abroad, forward planning, having a lot of freedom, success, looking back on your choices. So like this would come, if you did travel from the two of wands, this is you looking back on your choice and being like, yes, that was actually the right one. You're looking back on your choices mean like I actually I popped off there this one obviously is the marriage card but if the, it doesn't come up in a love reading and more in like a career general like think of the feelings that would come from being married like you feel stable secure it, that could be some people's definition of success is like marrying someone so it could be that you're feeling successful yeah or if you've achieved something or you've gotten your dream job dream person that sort of buzz and people are celebrating it for you you you're allowed to celebrate it yeah and then next one five conflict okay so this is like ego clashes for example if you worked in the fashion industry in london this would be the card that you would get because it's literally like everyone fighting stealing each other's ideas territorial and defensive chaotic yeah ego clashes arguments just bickering it could be passive aggressiveness as well Six of Wands then is success, victory, pride, achievement. It also could be like fame, recognition. Um, yeah, so getting the recognition you, de you deserve. You could be a leader in the spotlight and have loads of supporters. Oh yeah, and loads of confidence. Fair play to you. Next then is Seven of Wands. So this is standing up for what you believe in, fighting your corner, taking the high road, being protective, having a strong will, defensive, be a bit more assertive. <coughs> But it also could be like, look at your own flaws as well, sort of like calm down chap, like stop fighting with everyone else and maybe look at your own flaws too. But at the same time, like it is good to stick up for yourself. Next one is something coming in really fast, 100 miles an hour, taking action, exciting times, could be traveling as well, freedom, loads of energy in this, being swept off your feet, infatuation. This is like me and Jason getting the matching tattoos after only being with each other for 20 days. That's basically what this card is. Impulsive, going in full steam ahead, but also worked out. We are getting married. So the next then, nine, nine of wands is an ongoing battle. You're feeling a bit fatigued. Like this is your man from the fucking, the seven of wands. Remember I was like, calm down chap and look at yourself. I was like, come on, like literally just, it's fine. Look at your own flaws before you're, you're fighting too much with everyone else and you're wearing yourself thin. So that's him now where he's looking back on it and he's like, oh, maybe I overreacted. And you did, I think you did overreact. So you're learning from your past fa failures and you're learning from your mistakes, but that's actually good. Cause that's progress. That's progress if you're learning from your mistakes. This one, overloaded with stress, having too much on your shoulders, but you're almost at the finish line. So your man is walking there, but also because he doesn't have to go in one trip, he could easily put half of those down and do two trips because he's so close, but he's being a bit stubborn about it. But to make sure that you are not wearing yourself too thin again and that you are looking after yourself too, because sure, what if he's carrying all of them and he breaks his arm? Then he wouldn't be able to do anything for ages. Next then, page of wands, again, good news coming in very fast. It's going to bring a lot of fun, play, optimism, energy. Could be a new idea. Again, could be someone ask, <laughs> ask you on a date. Um, it could be someone being like, oh my god, let's go on holiday together. Yeah. Or like asking you to record a song with them. Next then, Knight of Wands. Someone who's very adventurous, warm, energetic, charming, a hero, exciting, fearless, confident, rebellious, taking risks, being a free spirit, being a bit flirty, uh, having a hot temper, a bit travel, could be moving country and being swept off your feet. Next then. Someone who is energetic. I actually don't really understand. I think the page, the pages and the aces for me a bit are a bit vague for each suit. 
to be honest. Like, they only differ slightly, but anyway, what was I saying? Yeah, so the Queen of Wands is energetic, strong, courageous, passionate, funny, independent, sexy, confident, optimistic, outgoing, chaotic, efficient, a bit hot-tempered, forgetful, could be a mother card, also could be a fertility card. Anyway, next then. Oh, this is the last card. Again, same as the Queen of Wands. Uh, funny, charming, way with words, fearless, action oriented honest, passionate, loyal, protective, natural leader, maybe a bit self-centered and controlling, having a hot temper, also could be a father card. So the two of them are a bit pat, like look at the red, they're feisty. So if you got this in a love reading, it's like so passionate, you could bicker a lot, but the sex would be great. The sex would be so good, but you do bicker a lot, but in out of love, do you know? And you're both very creative, love, have a hunger for life sort of buzz. And one's just a feminine, one's a masculine. That's literally the only difference. I think these should be gender neutral. If I was to make my own tarot cards, I would just melt them into one. No gender binaries, because it just doesn't make sense to me. Because that to me, that's just, they're the same. Except for like the Elon Musk and the Grimes one. But anyway, okay, they're all the cards. If you want me to go, I love the way my face is in it. If you want me to go more in depth about like the spreads that I do, like the readings, I could do another video. Oh God, I could do another video on that. Also, this video is sponsored by Skillshare because they do tarot reading courses on their website. But anyway, I'll have the ad, that ad at the end with my little voiceover. Thanks so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you like this video. Also, I do tarot readings on my Instagram. So just give me an L text and see if I have an available appointment for you. They do book up very fast and so I only do them on a weekly basis, but I will let you know. And I always have stories up when I'm taking uh, appointments again. Thanks so much for watching. Anyway, see us. Thanks. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. If you hadn't heard me go on and on about it already, Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes at which you can utilize at any hour of the day to learn something new or master an already existing skill that you have. All the classes are provided by experts and pre-recorded so it can suit your schedule without the pressure of in-person classes. They have anything you can think of from gardening and nutrition to digital marketing and creative writing. And of course, there are tons of classes on tarot cards and spirituality if you want any more in-depth knowledge on what I've just talked about in this video. If you want to try it out for yourself, the first 1,000 people who use the link in my description will receive a one-month free trial of Skillshare Premium. Thanks again, Skillshare, for sponsoring this video.